A warm welcome to today's program and today I've decided to inspire you to remember right now that a lot of youths have missed out to go to school and uh, I'm sure this has uh, seriously affected girls and today I'm having an amazing girl who has been uh, through a lot and she's, uh, she's here to share her story and tell us her resilience to become whom she is today. So let's have it. Hey Maureen. Hi Jaya. Um, Jitambulisha, introduce yourself, tell us your name and tell us your story because I believe your story will inspire so many girls. Sure. Mm -hmm. So my name is Maureen. Mm. I was brought up in different parts of Nairobi. Mm. Um, but right now I'm staying in Mombasa. So um, growing up, I had a very loving family. I was staying with my mom and my stepdad. So um, I was able to go to good schools. Um, I could get all the basic needs that I needed. And it reached a point, um, my mom passed away. My household rest in peace. Mm -hmm. So by this time I was in class two. So table stand, everything changed and I had to adjust to the situation. Mm -hmm. So um, at this moment I was uh, mourning the death of my mom um, thinking that the whole world has, has stopped because my mom has died and um, it's so sad that everybody had moved on with their lives and I was the only one who was mourning her. I'm saying this because my stepfather um, um, looked for another wife immediately and she, the, he married another wife and everything turned against against me because uh, I was not there. The, the yes, daughter. yes, yes. Mm. So it's a stepfather and a stepmother. I experienced child abuse, but I was able to, you know, uh, take it all because I needed to go to school. They were taking me to a good school. After some time, um, they changed me and took me to a public school, a public school in Kayole where um, um, we had uh, like thousands of students, like over a thousand students. So we had to take shifts in going to school. Um, a class of, uh, uh, say class three students, they will go from um, eight to around 11, then they go home, then we take over from 11 to maybe three. Mm -hmm. So it was not a very good school, I could mm -hmm. say, from what I had, I, I was used to. Mm -hmm. So life became um, so hard because I was trying to balance between school and um, the pressure at home because my stepmother was a difficult one, I can say. So it reached a point where I was like, why am I even suffering like this? Yet I have relatives. I have um, my aunt, this, the sister to my mom. She can, take, uh, she can take care of me. She can help me out. So I decided to run away from that home and I go to my aunt. My that aunt, the sister to your mom now. yes, the mm. sister to my mom. Mm. She welcomes me home and she continues to give me education. She takes me to school, she gives me the basic needs, but it reached a point where she could not um, um, take care of my needs because she's not that well off and she also has her own kids and um, she had she was forced to take me to another home so all along i've been moving from one home to the other one home to the other in nairobi and all, all like throughout my life and um, i understood because it's not anyone's responsibility they're just helping me out of goodwill mm. yes so um mostly it was because of financial um, struggles that they let go of me, but also some relatives, I can say they, they took, took me, yes, 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 yes. So I also experienced child abuse in my own relative's home. But this time round, I was like, provided they are taking me to school, I don't care. So I had to be strong so that I can finish my primary school. And after I, I sat for my KCPE, I had passed very well and now my aunt tells me um, I, I am not going to pay your fees 
you have openly. to look for yes openly on my face and I'll, I, I cried a lot. I think the, the, one of the things that I've done continuously in my life is cry. Mm -hmm. And it is healthy because it has helped me. After I cry, I become strong and look for a solution to the problem that I have. So I cried and I wondered what to do because at this point, I, I could not do anything. Lucky enough, my grandfather calls me. He says, let her come to my place. He is also not that financially well off, but he had the good heart of taking me in. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I need to go to high school. I have no, I have no hopes because he is also not able to. He wants to, but he can't. So um, I stay at home. People go to school. They join Form One, and um, all this is happening and I, I still have no hopes. So it reached a point when I heard about a school called Daraja Academy in Nanyuki. So I get the application forms, I fill the application, application forms, I was called for an interview. Lucky enough, I went and told them my story and uh, everything, and I showed them my passion for being in school. So, um, I was lucky to be among the 32 students in the whole country to get a scholarship from Daraja. So um, I went through my high school without paying even a single cent. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, um, before, before you, you got that scholarship, is there any challenges that you faced by staying with your grandpa? Yes. Mm -hmm. There are so many challenges because um, remember you're helpless and the uh, people who are willing to help you, they don't have the ability to. So I was staying at home. Um, I just do the normal duties that uh, a girl can do at home. You wake up, um, wash the utensils, clean up the house. And now um, in Nanyuki, we have um, cows and all that. So I will go and uh, Kuchunga Ngombe, mm -hmm. like um, in the fields, I take the cows to feed, I take them to the river, so that was my, now, my, my routine now. Other people in school, but I'm at home doing that. Mm -hmm. Yes, as I'm waiting for Daraja, this time I had applied, but I had no response. So I don't know whether I'm going to make it or I'll just stay at home. So Daraja came in and the four years were perfect. How long did it take for you to get that sponsorship? The scholarship? Yeah. Um, it took me like, I joined almost the end of uh, first term, mm -hmm. when uh, towards the end of first term, because Daraja takes time before they respond so that they, they can actually get those people who can't really get, go to school. You see, when you have a, a problem, uh, you will actually stay home because you can't afford. But if you have another solution, you'll go to school. When you see that, ah, oh, these people, they have stayed for so long without even um, responding. Mm -hmm. So I was helpless at that moment. So I was at home. People had gone to school and I was still at home. And your stepdad and stepmom had not they had, taken they had, any opportunity to look for you? No, they didn't. Furthermore, we were not related, so I don't think it was a very big issue to them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was like um, I had even given them some, some, yes, yes, some space to breathe and all that, so that they can now have their own family, uh, which is okay. This is life, mm -hmm. and it is okay. So um, I finish my high school, and um, I go back home. The same situation is still there. There is still no money to continue with my um, campus. Uh, but at this point, I'm an adult. I'm 19, and um, um, people expect me to also do something about my life. Mm. Um, so I decide to go back to Nairobi. I, 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 when I come back to Nairobi, I start looking for um, small hassles. So um, I came to my aunt, the sister to my mom, again. Um, her name is Auntie Caro. So Auntie Caro tells me that um, 
if you want a job, I, there are no good jobs here. So you must struggle if you really need to get a job. And I'm like, I'm, I'm okay with that. I know there's nothing good that comes easy. So I'll do it. whatever job that I get, I'll do it. Mm, there's nothing good that, that comes, comes easy. easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I get um, a job uh, of selling tea leaves on commission. <laughs> So um, I work from a company or from someone. It's from someone. So so you are getting commissions. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I walk around Nairobi trying to convince people to actually buy the tillies. It's a brand that is not even known in Kenya. He was the one manufacturing. I am not even sure. I was so excited to get the job. I was like, just bring them. I'll go sell. He gave me the prizes and I add some uh, few coins to and whatever top. price. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and then, <laughs> so it is life and I, I was ready to do it. So I walk in the streets of Nairobi trying to convince people to actually buy the tea leaves. Resilience. Yes, yes. <laughs> so I don't even have fear to mm -hmm. move from one, one street to the other. Mm -hmm. I used to move um, from Feather to all those places. Like, uh, there's, I don't think there's somewhere in Nairobi that I've not gone while selling the tea leaves with a bag on my back. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I've, how much was were you being paid per, per sale or per day? So, this is the funny part. Right now, it is funny, but at that moment, it was sad. This guy <laughs> did not even pay us. <laughs> He, he ran away with our money. He was supposed to pay us after a month. Of working so you survive on the few coins that you add when you when he says say for example one one bag is 60 shillings mm -hmm. you add 40 bob yes you add 40 100. bob yes <laughs> so you survive with the 40 bob for that time before the end of the month when he pays you mm -hmm. so he never paid us for three months I did that job but he never paid us three months working yes with no with pay zero payment yes and you could walk all that round. Yes. <laughs> so um, I, I was resilient. I now thought of something else because that was not working for me because I needed money to, I was raising money to go to campus. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I thought of another business idea. I went back to my aunt. I told her, I, I cannot do this. I think this one is not helping me. And who got you the job? Your aunt? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so she says, so what else can we do? I, I, I can also see that it is not working, but you, you, you always want to push and I gave you a chance mm -hmm. so that you can um, think of something else. And I, I, I thought of something else and this time round, uh, COVID had come in and everybody was uh, on lockdown. So there's lockdown and um, you're not supposed to move from one place to the other, but I knew I needed to look for my fee, to fundraise for my fee by myself. So what I did, I bought sanitizers and masks at that moment because mm. that is the one of the creating business. Yes, yes, mm. yes. So when people are being told to stay in there, to stay indoors, I, I, I could not do that because I knew I, I needed to go to school. Mm. I went ahead and started a um, Mandazi business. So I would wake up at five in the mm. morning, yes. Uh, go spot a place in Kayole. I don't have a specific spot that I can call my own, you know, due to the county government and all that. I didn't have a license. Mm. I put my things there. I start cooking Mandazi on offer. Um, I went what on do you a loss. offer? Like I would sell, normally you get a, a the street mandazis, you get them at five five shillings, mm -hmm. right? At that moment. But I will sell ten to ten so that I can attract people mm -hmm. and then after maybe I get customers then I can go to normal prices. Mm -hmm. So I'm selling my mandazis at an at a loss so that I can get people but it's still not working. <laughs> no, you could not even get customers. I got customers but um they were like they were not enough to give me the, the capital to do it tenor tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to my aunt 
every now and then that he had me some money so that I can buy unga and I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So I had to stop. So I go at home and um, I, I was called for a job, a good job this time around in an importing company. So I go as the customer service, mm -hmm. the customer care. And they, I, I had hopes now. I knew that this is it. This is a breakthrough. Yes, mm -hmm. because it was paying well. Mm, but then again, after some few months, um, I had been employed by a very good lady. But um, the husband, instead of seeing the capability that I had in, you know, bringing more clients mm. to their company and all that, he saw the other Side. Yes. So he, he, he wanted to take advantage of me, mm -hmm. but I, I said I better stop working here than giving in to him. So when I said no, I was fired. Yes. So I lost my job and... That is after how long? After like six, six months, six to seven months, I lost my job again. So this time... COVID has gone down and we need to go to school. Now, schools have started to open, everything has gone to normal, mm -hmm. and uh, now people are being admitted in school. My aunt tells me, how much do you have so that I can add you? So she gives me um, what she had in her savings for my school, then I give her what I had saved, then um, I go to Mombasa because I was supposed to be admitted in Mombasa mm -hmm. at Tum. Mm -hmm. So um, I go to Mombasa with what we had. Not even, I had not gone to Mombasa before, but I went there alone. It's not the normal thing where your parents take you to school, they're all excited because mm -hmm. you're being admitted mm -hmm. to campus and all that. I went there by myself. I only had like 40% of the fee that was required to be paid. And um, getting there, I was told that I cannot be admitted because they need 50%. No, they needed 50%. 50 mm -hmm. Yes. So this 50%, um, I could not afford it at that moment. And that was the last day of admission. So I was crying. I called my aunt. I told her that they, they, they can't admit me because I, I don't have the the whole amount that they need. So my aunt tells me, um, let me try get a loan somewhere and then we can pay because this is the last day we can't afford you, uh, you, you coming back here without being admitted. And I said, it's okay. So I tried calling some relatives, but it didn't work. So my, my aunt got a loan, then the 50%, we had the 50%. And I was admitted, if not the last person, it's the second last person in my class. So I, I was happy. At that moment, I felt so nice. Relieved. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I was like, I felt like I have achieved a lot. But yeah, so after um, going to, I attended classes and um, the whole semester was actually really nice. But now it came a point where we, we are now supposed to do our exams. For you to do the exam, you have to complete the full amount. Now the other 50%. I called my aunt. My aunt says that she, she's not, uh, she, she doesn't have the money. She tells me that um, she can get a loan somewhere, but it will take time before the deadline. I was helpless. I didn't know what to do I, at that moment. I have no one to call because I, I know their response. At, at this moment, I'm even afraid of calling someone because they'll just they listen to one, you yeah. and mm. then see my pesa, mm. which is okay. Maybe to some it is true. To some they just, they're not willing, mm. which is not a problem. It is a choice, right? So, um, there is a friend of mine that uh, I went to high school with. At this moment, she had heard about my story and she, uh, she had spread the word uh, in my school. So the teachers in my, from the Raja Academy, they fundraised the 50% and they sent me so that I can mm. do my exam. You are primary teachers? No, my high school. High school, oh. Yes, mm -hmm. the Raja Academy, mm -hmm. yes. So they pay the 50% 
and I do my exams. So after you've been admitted, the other semesters, you can just join them um, when you're about to do your exam, that's when you do the, the clearance. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So I, I, I did my exam and, and did my second semester. But now the, this is the hard part because I'm in my second semester, but I can't, I don't even have 10% now. I don't even have 20%, leave alone the 50% that I had in my first semester. So I have nothing at this point. So I had to drop out. I dropped out of school. So I, I went to look for a job and I got a job in a hotel. We call them Comrade Hotels because it is just a, a hotel where it is near the school. So it is for the students. So I get um, a job here. So it is this exam period and my classmates are coming to eat to have their lunch in the same hotel. This was so painful. I'm serving my classmates to have lunch and go so that they can go and um, have, sit for the exams, yet I cannot. So they, they, they come and make fun of it because they don't know the reason why mm. I'm working there. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, oh, make a tashul, I'm some take exam, and I'm like, Mr. Akini, may be fun to find you know, pretending mm -hmm. to be a gangster. You are okay. <laughs> yes, you are pretending to be a gangster, but you but know But deep inside. down you are, you are yes. broken. Yes, mm. because you need to, to do the exam, but you can't, mm -hmm. you don't have any option. All my life I've been, ha I've been having hope of making it, but this time I, I just felt like the Everything world should just... Shambles. Yes. I felt like the world should just collapse and everything is shit we are in. Mm -hmm. So um, I continued working there, serving my classmates. They, they come, make fun of me, and it became a lifestyle until they finished the exams and all that. Then, um, so um, I wondered what to do because now that the business of that hotel had gone down because the school had closed. So there's no more mm, class, work, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, the next semester is approaching, I can't join. So I felt like I was in an ocean drowning and there's no one to save me. But guess what? It is now that Glow Foundation comes in. Um, Glow Foundation comes in and they give me a, a, a scholarship. Um, how I got the scholarship is through um, a friend of mine. She's called Joyce. She works at Glow Foundation. She comes to visit um, some other girls in our school who have the, the, the scholarship because they do school visits for girls. So. Um, I call her, I tell her, I want to meet you. Can I meet you? Jess is like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just come. Um, when I go to Joyce, I tell her everything. I open up to her and she tells me, don't worry. She gives me hope of life. She tells me, you will still go to school. Mm -hmm. Lucky enough, the process was completed and uh, they, they sent me an email uh, that I was now a glow girl. And I joined school the following semester doing IT. So um, I do IT now and um, I, I, I get to learn so many things apart from the school fees being paid because GLOW pays for your school fees the first week. That is so abnormal to me because I used to struggle even the last day with no fees. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, now, I'm, I'm introduced to a new life where the first week, all the, the fee has been paid. I have upkeep money. So I have now time to relax and think about what I want in life and all that. Now my mind is open. Mm. Um, Glow gives, aside from the, the money, they uh, have an added advantage. They have mentorships. They teach you about side hustles. Um, they teach you about finances. There's a lot that Glow does, and to just to give you empowerment. So at that moment, you had stopped doing side hustles once you got the sponsorship, or you continued looking for remember side the, hustles. Remember, the hotel had closed because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the students had gone home. Mm -hmm. So it normally closes when there are no students. When the school have closed, then after they open. 
um, the business goes back to normal. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I had no side hustle. So when I'm, I'm, I'm going to school, um, I, I have everything that I need now. I start thinking of other new ideas of, you know, improving myself. I didn't stop looking for side hustles. That is something that is in me. Mm -hmm. So I get um, a job somewhere at a um, place where they sell uniforms and I work there for some few months then I realize oh what they're giving me is not enough to you know it's like I'm doing charity because what I'm being paid is used, I just use it for fair and that's it like it was so little but I was so dedicated and someone saw me when I was there I was mm. working there mm. his name is Kimani I'm so grateful for this man because he, he saw me at that shop and he, when I left, he told me, he called me, why did you leave this place? And I was like, I told him the truth and he was like, I don't worry, that is life. After some few months, uh, he called me again and he was like, Maureen, um, are you still in Mombasa, I guess? There is an interview somewhere, I need you to go. And I was like, what interview? It's from an IT company and they need... Um, at that moment they were hiring they needed a sales and marketing person so I need you to go for that interview and he gave me the, t the details but I told him Kimani I, I don't know anything I, I have no experience zero everything is zero but he you told, succeeded yeah, yes you got the job yes I went for the interview and I succeeded so uh, because of time Maureen mm -hmm. uh, how far are you and if you would like to tell probably I know right now people are going through a lot and there are so many families that are, their kids have missed out from being admitted to high school and probably they'll need to be supported. What can you tell them and uh, what advice can you give girls? Mm -hmm. Have hope. That is always my number one advice to mm. anyone. Have hope. It doesn't matter whether you're sleeping on the streets, have hope. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether you're sleeping hungry have hope. It doesn't matter whether you don't have, you can't afford um, fees, have hope. I had hope and I can tell you today, Jael, that I got a job and right now I'm a, I'm a manager of that. It's called Ecobiz Limited. Mm -hmm. From grass to grass. Yes, yeah. Yes, I am an, a manager at Ecobiz Limited because I believed in myself and I had hope. Mm -hmm. Glow Foundation came in and they gave me more hope of life. They give it, they give me they gave me sorry they gave me a hand that mm -hmm. I can you know I can walk they they became those people that I can walk with mm, they showed in my you. life mm -hmm. they 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 gave me the support that I needed mm -hmm. and all you need is to first believe in yourself so that other people can actually believe in sure. you believe in yourself and other people will believe in you sure and probably people might ask where can get that glow because I'm sure people will be coming to go get that support yes mm -hmm. so glow foundation global all the platforms social media um, Instagram all the social media accounts Instagram Facebook YouTube glow foundation global if you need any help go find them if you need to support because this is a good organization yeah, sure. and they we need also... to support our own right yeah sure go support them Thanks so much, Maureen. I know you are an inspiration to so many, from grass to grace. You know, being being a CEO somewhere, yeah. and plus, you know, if you connect with the story that we've been through, it is a big, it's a big, big hustle. Yeah. So thanks so much. I'm sure your story will inspire so many girls. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, my good people, this is a story to inspire, especially you youths. Never give up. In this life, it's all about how you position yourself and you persist pushing on. My name is Jalusumba. Till next time, see you.